Okay, this most likely will be the last video, only two parts for module 23. So we have evaluating functions, absolute value, rational, or radical. So you've got three functions given. This is the function for f, the function for g, and the function for h. And they want you to evaluate each of these functions at a different x value. So for f of negative four, what that means is I need to be looking at this function and plugging in a negative four everywhere I see x. So I plugged in the negative four there. Now I'm gonna plug in a negative four here and then evaluate it. So I get three times negative five minus four, three absolute value of negative nine, three absolute value of negative nine is positive nine. So I end up with 27 for f of negative four. For g of three, I'm going to use this function to plug in the three. So everywhere I see an x, I'm plugging in the three. And then using my orders of operations. So exponents come first, three squared is nine, same at the bottom. Then multiplication, I get 18. Then subtraction up at the top, because these are grouped separately, negative 23. Let me make sure, because sometimes when I assume, I'll get the wrong answer, yep. <coughs> And this can't be reduced, so that's going to be my answer there. Now, for h of negative 5, we have to use the function for h, okay? So we're going to say 3 plus the square root of negative 5 plus 9. That's 3 plus the square root of 4, which is 3 plus 2, which is 5. And those are our three results. Make sure you plug each number into the corresponding label inside um, Alex. This, however, this is an absolute value function. The green one is an absolute value function. The blue one is a rational function. And then the red one that I have here is a radical function. Okay. There's nothing different from the lines and the parabolas, the quadratic functions. It's just the function looks different, but you're still just plugging in the number and computing the value. Okay. Here we go, finding the domain of a fractional function in radicals. Now we have done two separate things before. We have taken the domain of fractions and we've also taken the domain of radicals. However, what they're doing now is combining the two into different situations that you might see, okay? And you find the domain of that. So the first thing you need to do is figure out uh, what you have. So I know that the inside of my square root has to be positive. It cannot be, um, it has to be a positive number or zero. You just can't have a negative square root in, um, otherwise you get imaginaries. So this has to be positive or equal to zero, which means that x has to be greater than or equal to negative eight. However, I also, that my denominator can never equal zero because if it does, then it causes the fraction to be undefined. So I'm gonna add four to both sides to solve for x and divide by negative one to continue solving for x so that I get x cannot equal negative four. Now what I have to do is I have to draw the inequality first. So draw the inequality first. Here's negative eight and I'm gonna shade everything greater than negative eight and this is gonna have a solid dot because there's a bar in involved. Negative four is over here, and now I'm saying everything but negative four. What that means is that there's actually going to end up being a hole at negative four. And so what I need to do is I need to uh, put this picture into interval notation. So I've got from here to here that stops there because there's a hole. So solid, negative eight to negative four, open but then it continues on the other side of negative four and goes forever in that direction, the positive direction, so to positivity, okay? So that's the first one. Second one is a different situation. The second one has um, the, the radical in the denominator. So I know that what's inside the denominator uh, has to be greater than or equal to zero. I also know that the denominator itself cannot equal zero. So same thing as before. 
Now here, I'm gonna minus over and I get x cannot equal negative five. Here, I'm gonna square both sides. You get x plus five cannot equal zero. Minus five, minus five, you get that x cannot equal negative five. So again, draw your inequality first. So when I go to draw this number line, here's negative five. I'm gonna say solid because there's a bar and everything to the right. And then now I'm gonna draw my, my um, this part here, I'm gonna remove negative five. So it was solid, but because I have to remove it, it's now gonna become an open dot, okay? So when I put this in interval notation, it's gonna be open dot negative five all the way to positive infinity. There's no break in the graph like there was here because it was solid, then a whole, and then it continued. So it's just one interval to represent the domain of part B. Now here, this problem can actually be rewritten as the square root of three over the square root of x minus eight. And we're worried about this um, numerator because three will never be zero or, I mean, will never be a negative, right? So this is okay. We don't have to worry about setting the inside of that greater than or equal to zero because three is greater than or equal to zero. But we do need to figure out which x values make this radicand greater than or equal to zero. And if I add eight to both sides, I get x has to be greater than eight. But I also know that the denominator cannot equal zero. So if I square both sides, I get x minus eight cannot equal zero still, and x cannot equal eight. So again, the same steps apply. Graph the inequality first. Here's eight, I have a slip dot. Every bigger than eight is the inequality. Second thing, remove the eight. So instead of a solid dot there, now there's a hole there. And to put this in interval notation, I only need one interval from eight to infinity. One last topic, and we are done with module 23. So this problem says, finding domain and range from a linear graph in context. So the example here is, Dual is exploring the formula for the circumference of a circle. He computed the circumferences of several circles with different radii. Radii is the plural version of the word radius. He then plotted the results and connected them with a line, as shown below. The graph shows the circumference in centimeters versus the radius in centimeters. Find the domain and the range of the function shown. Write your answers as inequalities using x or y as appropriate. Or you may instead click on empty set or all reals as the answer. Okay, so remember two things, domain, is the x values, right? Those are the x values. So we have to say, well, our x values start here at what looks like zero, and because of that arrow going forever to the right, it's gonna go from zero to infinity. We know infinity always gets the parentheses. That's a solid dot, which means it should have a bracket. Now range is the y values. I'm not done because this I did not follow the directions, okay? Range is the y values. So you go from the lowest y value, which looks like zero, to the highest y value. But this thing is going up forever. So the y value is going from zero to infinity. There's a solid dot, so you have a bracket at zero. And in infinity, you always have a parentheses. But this is not what they asked me for. They asked me for this in, in, in inequalities, okay? So I like to do is I like to graph this first. This is zero with a solid dot and everything to positive infinity. And if I write that as an inequality, it means x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Same thing here. I don't even need to. From zero to infinity, right, would be range requires you to use y's though. From y, greater than zero, but because of the bucket, I know I should also include zero. So you don't necessarily need to do the visual, the graph. You can go from the interval straight to the inequality. But these are what they're going to ask us for. This is the answer.